Good morning, Floss Tube. How are you do doing this morning on this beautiful May 31st, 10 o'clock in the morning, 70 degrees and cloudy here in Maryland. I know, what a surprise. I am doing great for the most part. I woke up with a bit of a headache this morning. Well, more than more than a bit of a headache, but it's it's tapered off a bit. So I wasn't going to do a video. I was going to wimp out, but um, I am feeling a little better. And since we only have two days to go, how could I wimp out? That just wouldn't be right. Let me see. Okay, so going to put this down for a second and talk about a couple other things before I pick this back up again. That's Pretty Little India, today's project. So you remember this guy, my little knitting swatch for Laura Nelkin's latest project, her club project. Blocked it this morning. It's still a bit damp, so I will wait till it's totally dry before I um, before I measure it to see if I have gauge. I used a size five. It turns out that the pattern calls for a size three. As I've mentioned before, I usually do go up two needle sizes with Laura's patterns. Our, our, our knitting is just that different that I have to go up two, two needle sizes. Um, so this may be the needle I use. It's I like the look of the fabric that I got. She did does mention she did a live event last night of live Facebook event where she revealed the pattern. I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, and she did mention that since this is a single and it has yak, yak down, yak fiber. I'm not sure what the word is for that. That it does, um, it is going to pill very easily if it's not treated gently. So she recommended. So she's using a size three needle in order to get. Um, a fairly sturdy gauge so that it will um, it will keep its integrity more it won't rub as much it won't bloom and loosen and pill as much so let me show you the pattern and then I'll tell you which beads I've chosen so this is the design um, hold on one second Urgh. That's Laura. Isn't she a cutie? So this is the design. And you can see the beads are very um, faintly scattered throughout the piece. There's not a whole lot of them. She has a very interesting stitch here. Isn't that interesting looking? I can't wait to play with that. Separated by some tuck stitch and I think she called this a quilt stitch. I'm not I'm not sure. Knits and pearls separated. And then so in the middle of the pearl section she's placed a bead and then separated it by this interesting little gathered stitch here. So there's a bead, knit, gathered, knit, bead, knit, gather, knit, and then it, I think that row, I think there's no bead, and so up here it kind of alternates. So you can see there's just a few beads. This is not a Mobius, it's just a straight cowl. Um, it's long, so it will be able to be doubled, which she shows in this picture. It's a gorgeous piece. I think it's going to be really fun to knit. There you can see the beads a little bit more. She chose a transparent, um, I don't know whether they're crystal lined. Her, her favorite, I think, is a, the, the topaz or the dark topaz with the Aurora Borealis, the AB finish. But they are more of a um, transparent crystal look than the matte look that I usually go for. So that is the pattern. It is called, car called Caramelized. As I said, it is exclusive to her club, I believe, for a year. So I've decided, so even though it's posted on Ravelry, um, it's not available for purchase just yet. So I need beads that are really gonna pop on the fabric. Now I do have, let me move the light so it's not quite as deceptive. So the beads that really stand out are these ones, right? We just have the light from the window coming in here now. The window's over that way, and it's a fairly big window. Um, it looks much brighter to you on screen than it does to me in person because the iPhone camera really pulls in as much light as possible. In real life, 
these are the ones that really stand out. I love these ones. I love the purple against the gold. Purple and gold is a great color combination. If you ever want to know a color to put with gold, go with purple. They're opposites on the color wheel and they make a great combo. But I think these are the ones that really stand out the most. And quite frankly, those are the ones that I first thought of when I saw this yarn. I love them. I love the, the finish, the AB finish, Aurora Borealis finish on them. So those are the ones I'm going to go with. Number three, a lot of you did choose number three. So yay. I hope to cast on for that today. We'll have to see how the day goes. This was my project yesterday. Dimensions kit, welcome friends. There you can see it a little better. I'm just going to do welcome friends. I might do to the Hickses. I don't know. Isn't that pretty? Um, I did switch out the Ada that came with it. It was a very stiff brown Ada, which did nothing for me. So I switched it out for the um, 36 count linen. This is the same linen I'm using on my um, linen and threads mystery sampler. It's the same th linen I tried to use on the summer row. I'm loving it on this, and I love it on the on the linen and threads band sampler as well, so I don't know. But anyways, the colors in this are so pretty. Didn't get as much time to stitch yesterday because I was wrestling with photos for most of the morning into the afternoon. But what I did get done, so yesterday in the video I was working on filling in um, the lighter purple in these grapes. I got all those done. Got some done over here. I had some of these stitches with only, this is the blue and navy, or blue and navy, yeah, maroon and navy um, blended thread. I had half stitches over here, so I finished those, and then I did these down here. And then um, I got these light, this is another blended green and khaki thread in here. I got the light stitches done here. Got all of this done in here, the middle of the leaf, and this, some of this olive stuff coming down in here. So I'd really hoped to get a lot more of the leaf done, this leaf done yesterday. So this is what I was working on, these grapes over here, the dark, these dark shadowy pieces in here, and then starting to build this leaf here. So and that looks like that middle of that leaf is half stitches. Doesn't it look really faint? I better really uh, check the pattern for that before I go any further. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, that's that one. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so, today, Pretty Little India by Satsuma Street. Again, love it because it's India. It's the Taj Mahal and look at those colors and the elephants and the Buddha and the Taj and palm trees and India Gate. Oh look, I didn't notice India Gate was there. And hmm, I wonder if that's supposed to be the Red Fort. I think it actually says on the pattern. Oh, it does. Let's see. We have, oh hold on, let me remove this yellow on here. This is a, um, this is one of the things in Knit Companion. Okay. So, Taj Mahal, of course, at the top. Oh, the Kuta Minar. Oh, that's what that is sticking up there. Okay. Minakshi Aman Temple is three. I don't know where that is. That might be someplace south. Mahabodhi Vihar. That's that one over there. Five is the Great Buddha, of course. Six, the Charminar. Hmm. I'm not sure where the Charminar is. That might be an old deli. I'm not sure. The Lotus Temple. That's in the middle. That's what I know is the Baha'i Temple, so um, I think that's in Delhi as well. Eight, the India Gate. As I said, that's that's right by um, where the, the Parliament is in New Delhi. Nine, Gateway of India, Mumbai. I've never been there. Someday I'll get to Mumbai. So, pretty little India. 
Ah, okay, let's stitch. Two days left, two days. Let me turn my light back down here so I can see, because seeing is good. Actually, one day after this, right? Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me. As much as I talk about needing a break from this, um, whoops, got my thread caught on that. Um, I have to admit that part of me is like, well, you know, maybe I could start another one. I do have all, everything I need to start, you know, that big city scene that I got from, from Korea from Soda Stitch. I could start that. What about that little relationship one, that Silver Creek sampler one? I got it. Stitches Unlimited. I'd really like to get that started soon. And, you know, I had plans to to actually work on my silk gauze sampler or my silk gauze piece, the Maureen Appleton one. I showed that a few videos ago. Um, I had thought about doing that on a video. <laughs> and then I have to, like, hold on, I'm rearranging my lamp. It's still not close enough. But then I have to kind of slap myself and say, Jan, stop it. Number one, doing silk gauze on this, I think. Um, you know, it might be an interesting thing for you guys to see, but it probably would cause me more headaches than what it's worth. Grr, everything's falling down here. Do you think I have too much on my too much on my desk? Maybe, huh? So, and then it's just like, oh, Jan, just stop. Get some of these done. Get some of these done. But yeah, I'm. This is kind of addicting. Doing all these starts, I, I am having no problems with it at all. I love it. I would love to continue with you guys every single day. But I'm not going to because I've got to get some of these done. And um, a stitch with me every day is, um, you know, like I said, it'll be good to have some downtime. I'm certainly into the mode, but I think that the time that I've been spending with you guys here will be put into my photo book, my photo books, so I can get those done because I really have to get those photos into the albums. I spent, I guess Ben, I spent, like I said, I spent the rest of the morning and part of the afternoon yesterday and then some of the evening as well um, getting, my, getting my photos into my iPad in the app on Shutterfly, and I think I mentioned, and, and it's really sad, this was just yesterday, I don't remember, <laughs> all the days are kind of blending together, I don't know what I've told you and what I haven't told you, so if I haven't mentioned this, I'm sorry, if I have, I'm sorry, it's just all kind of blending together. Anyway, um, I think I mentioned yesterday that I seem to be missing some New York City photos, so when Mike got home, we looked through his stuff, and he has some. Like, we went over to Staten Island, like I said. I think I said. Did I tell you? Did I tell Mike? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, Natural History Museum, Central Park. Um, we did the bus tour. I know I took pictures of St. Patrick's. That was, we, that was one of the stops. We went through Hoboken. We went past the... Um, Cake Boss store. No, I don't watch that show, but I've certainly heard of him. Um, and I'm pretty sure I took a picture out the window. So anyways, I can't find those pictures. I tried to bring up um, an older... I, I have a couple different, for those that are familiar with the Mac setup, a couple different photo libraries that I've had to mess with over the years. Um, and so I brought up an older photo library and while I did find my old, um, all my old pictures like from the, when the boys were little cause those weren't in my current photo library. Um, and all the other pictures from the trip, from the New England trip were in there. My photos of New York City weren't. The only photos I have for New York City are um, a picture of me and Mike in Times Square and a picture in the theater as we were waiting for Wicked to start. So, those are gone. 
I emailed my mother-in-law because my father-in-law is a is an avid photographer and um, part of the trip, part of the bus trip, he actually ended up staying on the bus because he his um he has plantar fasciitis and it was hurting him so bad that he couldn't get out and walk anymore. Um, but for the places he was able to get, I'm sure he has tons of pictures. So I emailed my mother-in-law and asked her to work with him to get together, you know, three or four pictures from each of the stops um, so that I can have something to put in the album for New York City. The rest of the places, I have more pictures than I can use, but for some reason, New York City has disappeared. Hold on, I need to count. That's five. Okay, that's right, three and three. Okay, good. So yeah, so today and um, like I said, the time that I usually have spent with you guys in the morning will now be spent getting photo albums made of all of our different trips. And it is about time. And it's going to take a while. And I'm just using um, Shutterfly has layouts in their app, you know, for different numbers of photos for the different pages. So I'm just going to use, I'm not getting fancy like I, I could do with digital scrapbooking. I don't want to take that long. My um, Florida album came out really, it's just like a classy black background with the pictures and whatever text I wanted to put on the pages. So I just basically I just have to decide um, as I pull my go through my photos, decide how many pages pictures I want on a page and choose a layout and move them onto the layout, add the text and boom, I'm done. So while it's going to take a while because I have a ton of pictures, um, it's it's won't be too bad. I will get them done and published this year. And that will feel awesome because we do like looking through our books and oh, remembering all the wonderful places. Mike did a map of um, the New England trip. Let me actually, he made a picture of it. Hold on one second. Let me find that. <coughs> Was our New England trip started in Maryland like I said so that he's basically showing the entire route <clears throat> so up along the coast with a stop I assume the seas are the oh no those are the stops along the way so you can see one out to the Cape, spent time on the Cape, Boston came up. The only New England state we haven't actually stayed overnight in is Rhode Island because it's so tiny. We have to actually make plans to stay there. Stayed in Kennebuckport, out to Bar Harbor. Now this just shows, this only shows our um, our campground and our RV route. When we were in Bar Harbor, we actually take took a trip a day to go up to Campobello Island in Canada. Um, so we went, you know, up that way for the day and then back. Stayed in the White Mountains, beautiful, beautiful, over to Burlington, Lake Placid. Came over here to Ontario, to Lake Ontario, went up, um, over to Canada here and went to Gananoque, did a, a boat tour of the Thousand Islands. Whoops, whoops. <laughs> Stop that. You know something? That's one of the photos. I think that was going up Mount Washington in the Jeep. Um, and then it was home. Back home through Pittsburgh, visit family in Pittsburgh, or in, not Pittsburgh, in um, Pennsylvania, visited my cousin in Lancaster. Um, yeah, and then back home. So anyways, that was fun. That was that was an amazing trip. So that's the first album I'm working on. Um, yeah, so that might be more than you wanted to know. <laughs>
you'll see pictures of those like I said on my on my regular videos I'm going to be doing montages at the beginnings of the different places we've been around the country so many gorgeous places to see out there come on let's see so this morning kind of keeping you know I talked about the flooding that happened in Ellicott City the other day. There was another article I read this morning about beach erosion that's happening down in Sarasota. Lido Key um, has been hit hard. It is, um, the erosion has taken away pretty much most of the beach up to some people's properties in, in some of the areas. So, um, Shoot, I'm gonna actually take those out and do that a different way. Um, Cause I have one more stitch right over here and I don't wanna have to go over here and then drop back over here. So I'm gonna take these out, finish that stitch and then jump over here and do these ones. Um, so anyways, yeah, Lido Beach, they're looking to do, um, they're gonna have to do a lot of dredging out in the, the passes between the keys to bring some sand in to rebuild up the beach um, because right now it's basically unusual, unusable. There's, there is no beach. Now, Siesta, which was, um, which was our beach, um, and I say it was our beach because, uh, that's where we live, but I also say it was our beach because, you know, Mike and I let other people use it sometimes, but it was our beach. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, it's huge. The thing, you know, Siesta wins awards every year for being one of the best beaches in the country. And the reason is, number one, because the sand, it, it's this beautiful white sand, really soft, um, almost, oh, for heaven's sakes, almost too soft sometimes, because sometimes it's hard to walk in. Um, oh, come on. but also because there's a lot of depth to the beach. Um, so it's, it's really wide from like where the, where the concession stand is and the change, oh shoot, the changing rooms and all that. There are certain things I'm not going to miss about doing these filming every day and that's this whole setup, <laughs> dealing with this whole setup. Um, but, but Siesta Key is just a beautiful, the public beach and the, and the beaches that are, um, that are kind of in front of all the different condo units. You can, you have access to the entire beach, though it's not like those areas are blocked off from people. But, um, we always found it fascinating. There's a lot of, um, wildlife protected areas where birds nest and of course where the where the sea turtles nest um but it's so big <clears throat> excuse me it is so big that there's just a lot of room for everybody but we've always found it fascinating that after you know how not just storms <clears throat> excuse me not just storms change the landscape, but just the the everyday erosion that happens on beaches. We could go one week and the the coastline looks one way, and you go another week and there's the uh, would be a big bulge coming out. Go the next week and there's like an inland little pond that's formed with all kinds of waterfowl. It, it, it's just fascinating to see how all that changes from. From week to week we loved it we would we walked on the beach a lot not as much as we would have liked mostly because when I was working at the store at the yarn store um, you know working four or five days a week I would just be exhausted because I'd be on my feet all day and so my days off the last thing I wanted to do was walk <laughs> so didn't get down there as much as we would have hoped but towards the end we do Oh, look, a flash flood watch at your last known location. Huh, that was a little notification just popped up because we are starting to get the leading edge of Alberto coming up here now. Tropical, I guess it's called a trub, trub, trop, <laughs> subtropical storm now. 
Alberto is what really did kind of a final number on Lido as it pounded against the, they only got normal wave action and rain. They didn't, you know, get any of the subtropical storm action, but it was certainly enough to, to do some damage. So looking down, my goal with this one, I, what I did was, I started in the center, but this, this piece of fabric, I originally got this piece of fabric to do hoity-toity on and decided I didn't like it on the white. Um, so it's really long. So I kind of, I measured the piece it would need to be for Pretty Little India, but I haven't cut it yet. So my goal today is to work down here to get to the bottom of the design so that I can cut off all this extra um, because this is... This is a bit of a pain. So we'll see how far I get. I'd really like to just work in a straight line kind of down here and get to the bottom so I can cut it off. Now, so let's do this in here. So let's see. <clears throat> I'm thinking ahead. Oh my goodness, I'm at 26 minutes. I've been rambling on for 26 minutes. See, I'm getting so used to this. <laughs> I can find things to talk about without a problem. All right, let me get a stitch started here because I want to talk about tomorrow. And I also will talk about what I started to talk about. Um, so when Michelle Bendy Stitchy tells you you got to do something, you got to do it, right? So I made a comment yesterday about I didn't know whether I was going to do a Stitch Mania recap because I have so many projects. And, you know, do you really? I haven't made a whole lot of progress beyond what you've already seen on them. So is it really worth doing any kind of recap? And she's like, yeah, we want to see all those silly projects all in one place. So I will do some sort of recap. Um, I'm still kind of going over in my mind the best way to deal with the mania um, of having all these projects, like do I show them all to you one at a time? Do I take pictures and do some kind of, um, do some kind of slideshow at the beginning or end or in the middle? Cause I also in my regular, you know, I'm gonna go back to a regular update. I have haul to show you. I do have, um, my other lonely little whip, my Harbor Haven, that I, I want to show you because it, it is gorgeous. Um, don't have any finished objects, of course. That would just be silly. Unless you count my, you know, finishing one of my sections of the Harbor Haven because that did happen in the midst of all of this. So, um, you know, I have and I do have some knitting to show you. So I do have other things to show you besides Mania. So it will make a very long, so maybe I need to do a separate Mania wrap-up one. That's what that's saying, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Okay, so we made that decision. Thank you guys for that. What other decisions can we make here? <laughs> I don't know. All right, so let me put this down. Enough rambling. Um, tomorrow, I had said June 1st. I was saving this one for June 1st, and this will be my last one. A new start, Prairie Schoolers. June. Now, Prairie Schooler's style is growing on me. It's not my favorite, um, but it is growing on me. And there are certain ones, like I love their band samplers. Um, I love their um, their other, like there is a garden sampler and, and the seasonal samplers. So I, I will probably add to my stash over time with those. Um, but this is starting tomorrow. And I love both the main one and the little one. So I, I plan on doing both. I wonder if I could do it. I wonder if you can do like do this and then do one, two, three, one, two, three, these six on each side. I will have to count that out and see if that will work. That's an interesting thought. Anyway, when I looked at this, I wasn't thrilled with the colors. Mostly because, as I've mentioned before, I am not an orange and yellow person. So the gold and the gold just kind of, uh, I like the pattern. I think it's really sweet, but the golds just didn't do a whole lot for me. So I thought, okay, I'm going to start pulling the colors. 
subbing in things when I need to, um, and see what I come up with, see what I think. And the fabric I was using for this is the lavender that came with the Saju tinctoral plants that I had gotten at um, a good yarn back in February. So, and I have to admit, I got my Eliza Bell Cox threads. Now, I am not doing Eliza Bell Cox. I had decided, I mean, you know, I, I, it's not my style. Sorry, I bumped you again. It's not my style, but I did order both the floss and the fabric because number one, I love her floss, and number two, I, I thought it would be a good way to try her fabric, and I will be showing that um, in my update video. So um, I am committing the cardinal sin of using the floss before I show it in an update, and you know something, I'm such a rebel, oh well. So most of these flosses are the ones that are called for, and it's kind of funny how... Um, there were quite a few of the ones called for in the Eliza Bell Cox um, collection, I guess you would say. But I'm changing out. So this is the color of the peacock, the blue. The brown around it is this mahogany color. And I think it's ugly. I'm sorry. I think that is butt ugly. No. That's not happening. So I am going to make the outer bands, the outline of the peacock that's this mahogany color. I've subbed in this blue, so the lighter blue. So those will be a nice contrast. The flowers here, get up there. The flowers here, um, the called for colors are a little oranger than what this is showing. So again, I'm subbing in, still, they're still kind of corally colors, but I'm subbing in these ones from Eliza Bell Cox. Now, the grass, since there's all this pretty grass, I think this was 30, 52, or 53, or 62, or 63, one of those, I'm gonna use the aqua green from the last pack of um, Eliza Bell, or from the last pack of Victorian. Motto threads. So there is some variegation to this, and I wanted that kind of interest in that grass. And last but not least, the gold. Now, as I said, I did not like that gold. But the gold that it's called for is 420. And it is a much richer color, I believe, than what is showing up in that picture, which I guess is true. And when I put it in there, oh, stop it. Grr. When I put it in there with all these other colors, I think it just really, it makes the perfect palette. It really adds a nice touch. So that is my palette for June with the lavender, soft lavender fabric. So that is tomorrow's start. I'm really looking forward to that. I will be starting in the top left-hand corner since there is that nice um, border to start with. Um, so I'll probably start there and then work on the words a little bit so you can actually see something. But anyways, that's tomorrow. By the time I come back to you tomorrow, I am going to do some counting, some figuring, and see if I can fit, if not three on each side, at least two on each side, and see. Oh, I guess I should figure out if I have enough fabric. <laughs> all right, I'll figure all that out, and I'll let you know tomorrow. Guys, have a great day. Get some stitching in. I hope you all do. Today is Thursday, so it's not Friday off the grid yet, but heck, stitch as much as you can. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.